Hello guys, it's Professor Haggard and today I will be discussing about how to create a conceptual framework. So for those of you guys who would like to be updated about the videos that I'll be uploading next, please do not hesitate to click like and subscribe and if you have anything to ask, please leave a comment. Today, we are going to discuss about how to create a conceptual framework. So, na Tagalog, ito po yung tinatawag nating conceptual na palangkas. So, without further ado, simulan na natin. So, unang-una na dapat nating tandaan kapag gagawa tayo ng conceptual framework is, of course, we need to know the definition of conceptual framework. Ano ba yung conceptual framework? Unang-una, it represents the researcher's synthesis of literature on how to explain a phenomenon. Ibig sabihin, ito ang kumakatawan sa kabuuan ng literature review na ginawa mo uh, so that you can explain the whole situation of your study. At <clears throat> dapat din natin tandaan na ang subtle framework is the researcher's understanding of how the particular variables in study connect with each other. So, very much applicable kapag gumagawa ka ng quantitative research because yung conceptual framework yung dapat natin i-identify when creating conceptual framework in a quantitative study are the variables in variables involved in the study. And to make it easier to understand the conceptual framework, it serves as a map or rather that will guide you towards realizing the Objective. So, map or rudder. So, rudder is a guide. Uh, kapag sumasakay tayo ng barko o yung aeroplano, merong part ng aeroplano or barko, yun yung tinatawag na rudder, which shows or which helps, which actually work to guide the airplane or a ship on its direction. Okay, so, yun yung tungkol sa conceptual framework. And lastly, uh, to generalize what is conceptual framework, it is primarily a conception or model of what is out there that you plan to study. Meaning, we are expected, kapag sinabi natin conceptual framework, we are expected to create a graphical representation to represent the study that we are to undertake. Okay, so that is conceptual framework. Okay. So, where should the conceptual framework be written? Da, saan ba dapat natin nilalagay ang conceptual framework? Or where should the conceptual framework be put? So, the conceptual framework should be written after literature review, review within your methodology section. So, dapat yung conceptual framework natin ay nilalagay natin after the literature review. Sometimes, hindi natin makikita within the methodology section based on uh, template given by our professor but the most important thing is that it should be located after the literature review so what is the difference of conceptual framework to theoretical framework so napaka importante na i-discuss natin kung anong kaiba ng conceptual framework to theoretical framework because most of the time this conceptual framework and theoretical framework ginagamit sila Sometimes, magkasabay pa itong ginagamit. Or sometimes, uh, merong conceptual framework at walang theoretical framework. And merong theoretical framework at sometimes, wala namang conceptual framework. So, by the way, ano nga bang kaibahan nitong dila? Theoretical framework na studies based on an existing theory or theory. So, simple lang. O, sinabi natin, theoretical framework comes from the word theory, yung word na theoretical. So, syempre, Yung paggawa natin ng framework or balangkas ay nanggagaling naman sa mga teorya na merong kaugnayan sa ating ginagawang investigasyon or research. However, kapag sinabi natin conceptual framework, on the other hand, is something that you can develop yourself based on this theory. So kung meron ka mga teorya, gagawa ka ng mga konsepto, yung mga konsepto yun, siyang gagawin mo ng conceptual framework. So ganun lang kadali yung kaibahan ng conceptual framework at saka theoretical framework. Okay, so simulan natin para nang sa ganun ay malinawan tayong lahat kung ano yung mahakbang kung paano gumawa ng conceptual framework. Unang-una na dapat ating tandaan, we need to study our topic. So of course, study your topic involves us to create our own literature review because the process of literature review 
gives you time to study your whole topic. Kaya kinakailangan i-study natin yung topic natin so that we can establish or we can identify the different concepts involving our study. And then after that one, you need to create a thesis statement. Thesis statement, by the way, when we say thesis statement, yung statement na nagre-represent ng idea or issue ng iyong research. So later on, I'll give you examples uh, corresponding these different steps. So third step, identify the concepts involved in the study. Dapat nating alamin o dapat nating identify yung mga concepts na na involved sa study natin. And then the fourth step would be for us to relate yung mga concepts na na-identify natin. We could get some scratch, pwede tayong kumuha ng scratch, tapos lalagyan natin mga arrows kung paano natin sila i-relate. Kung anong connection or how can you relate or connect the different concepts, vice versa. Okay? So, fifth step is to generate the conceptual framework in a more, in a more presentable way. So, let me give you an example. So, I have here a research title. So, example. Step one was to study your topic. Let's just say this is the topic represented by a research title. So the title here is How Climate Change Affects the Lives of Humans. Let's just say this is a qualitative study and you are going to create a conceptual framework. So remember that this is titled How Climate Change Affects the Lives of Humans. So the step two would be for you to create a thesis statement. So the thesis statement, let's just say you created a thesis statement that goes like this. So ganito siya. Climate change affects the lives of all kinds of human characterized by the increasing sea level, temperature, the amount of carbon emission, and the amount of rainfall. So if you can see, yung title natin, yung topic natin, is represented by this statement, which is thesis statement na nagre-represent ng kung anong issue yung iniimbestigahan natin na may kaugnayan siyempre sa ating research topic. So, the third step is for us to identify the concepts. So, based on the test statement, you can already identify the different concepts or variables yung quantitative study that is involved in your study. So, I have here the climate change and then the humans. It could be the experiences of humans. Anyway, this is just an example. The experiences of humans, let's just say, the livelihood of humans affected by the climate change. Just let's just say they are close to the sea, for example. And also, there are also specific concepts that characterize the climate change, which are the sea level, the temperature, the amount of carbon emission, and the amount of rainfall. So, the third step now is to identify the concepts. So, successfully, these are the concepts involving the study. So, this is the fourth step. So, we are to relate the concepts. So, we already identified the concept and now we are going to relate the different concepts which are the climate change, the sea level, the temperature, amount of carbon emission, and the amount of rainfall. So, I put here the arrows to relate the different concepts to each other and I decided that these concepts are not related vice versa. I mean, yung sea level, hindi siya uh, nakakapekto sa climate change, but rather yung climate change yung nakakapekto sa sea level. So kung siguro pepeding uh, dalawang araw, merong araw dito, tapos meron ding araw dito, so pepede din. So it would be based on the preferences ng researcher. Okay, and the same goes sa araw na ito. So step 5 would be, of course, the final step would be for you to create the final graphical representation of your conceptual framework, which is the one dapat natin ilagay doon sa ating research paper. So, this is how it may look like. So, step 5. So, we are now to generate the conceptual framework. So, unang-una na nilalagay natin is the climate change. Diba? So, I'll put arrows. So, I have there arrows corresponding the different variables that characterize the climate change, which, of course, those concepts will affect the humans. Okay. Ganun lang kadali po ang paggawa ng conceptual framework to generate the conceptual framework. And the same process 
will be applied in creating the theoretical framework. Only that the things that should be put here are the theories about or the theories involving our study. Okay? So, if you like this video, please do not forget to click like and subscribe and leave a comment if you have any questions about this discussion. And also remember, do not forget that there is no correct or standard format in creating the conceptual framework. That would be all and bye-bye.